In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the laws of arithmetic. Our learning objectives are going to be one, describe and apply the associative, commutative and distributive laws, and here they are here. And secondly, multiply numbers using mental strategies. As always, as you're watching this video, you should have your OneNote open with these slides on it and be taking down annotations along with me. Let's now begin by talking about the associative laws. Now I have two associative laws. I have the associative law of addition and the associative law of multiplication. Let's begin by talking about the associative law of addition. What this law tells me is that it does not matter which pair is added first. So here I have A plus B plus C, which obviously equals A plus B plus C. Now what the associative law of addition tells me is that it does not matter which pair is added first. Now we know because of order of operations and bid mass, if I put brackets in, if I put brackets in here, that's going to tell me do the brackets first. So in other words, this is saying A plus B, then plus C. But now if I come over here and I put brackets around my B and my C, this is saying first go B plus C, then plus A. Now my associative law tells me that this statement right here is true, that this side of my equal sign will equal this side of my equal sign. So I need to make sure that everyone right now put in these brackets on their slide. Let's now do an example together. So again, I need you to put in some brackets. Here we have three plus two plus four equals three plus two plus four. So the same thing on both sides. But now we're going to pair up my three and my two on this side. But on this side, we're gonna pair up my two and my four. So over here, I'm first going to do the addition of three plus two, which is five. Then I'm going to plus my four. While on this side, I'm first going to go two plus four, which is six, then plus my three, three plus. Now five plus four, that's nine, and three plus six, that's nine. And nine equals nine, which means all of this is true, which means my associative law of addition works. It does not matter which pair is added first. Let's now move on and talk about the associative law of multiplication, which tells me it does not matter which pair is multiplied first. So again, I need you to put in some brackets for me. I need you to put in brackets here and here, and then on this side, here and here. So what this now tells me is that if I go A times B, then times C, that's going to be equal to going B times C and then timesing A to it. So let's now do an example to see whether or not this is true. So here we have three times two times four, which equals three times two times four. But let's now put in brackets here. So I'm pairing together the three and the two on this side. But on this side, I'm going to pair together the two and the four. So over here, I'm first going to go three times two, which is six. Then I'm going to times that by four. While on this side, I'm first going to go two times four, which is eight, and then times that by three. Now, according to my associative law of multiplication, these two statements should be equal to each other. Well, six times four, that's 24. And three times eight, that's 24. And hey, look at that, they equal each other. Which means the associative law of multiplication works. It does not matter which pair is multiplied first. Let's now move on and do a little bit of an experiment and ask the question, does the associative law work for subtraction? So here's our trial. We have eight minus four minus two equals eight minus four minus two. Now, does it matter which pair is subtracted first? So let's put in our brackets again. We're gonna put in brackets here and here and here and here. So I've paired up different ones and we're going to see whether or not it affects my final result if I do this pair first or this pair first. So we want to check whether or not this right here is a true statement. So let's go ahead. So eight minus four, that is four. Then I'm going to have minus two. Then on this side, I'm going to have four minus two, which is two, and then have this eight minus. Now, do these two statements equal each other? Let's double check. Four minus two, well, that's two. And on this side, eight minus two, well, that's six. And the last time I checked, two does not equal six, which means this is not true, which means this is not true, which means the associative law does not work for subtraction. So I'm actually going to get my red pen and give that a big cross. The associative law does not work for subtraction. 
Let's now ask the question, does the associative law work for division? And here's our trial. We have eight divided by four divided by two equals eight divided by four divided by two. So again, we're going to put in some brackets. I'm gonna put in brackets there and there. So what we're asking now is does it matter which pair is divided first? So if I divide this pair first, eight divided by four, well that's two, then I'm going to have this divided by two here. Then over on this side, I'm going to first do four divided by two, which is two. Then I'm going to have eight divided by eight divided by. Now, are these two statements equal to each other? Well, two divided by two, that's one. And eight divided by two, that's four. And again, the last time I checked, one does not equal four, which means that's not true, which means that's not true, which means the associative law does not work for division. If we were now to recap what we've learned about the associative laws, we've learned that there are two associative laws, the associative law of addition and the associative law of multiplication. Let's now talk about the commutative laws. And again, there are two commutative laws, the commutative law of addition and the commutative law of multiplication. Let's begin by talking about the commutative law of addition, which tells me that the order of addition does not matter. So A plus B equals B plus A. And again, I need you to make sure that you're writing down these notes with me. You need to make sure that you write A plus B equals B plus A. Let's now go through an example together. So here I have three plus two equals two plus three. So is this true right here? Well, three plus two, that's five. And two plus three, that's also five. So yes, this is true. The commutative law of addition works. Let's now talk about the commutative law of multiplication, which tells me the order of multiplication does not matter. So A times B equals B times A. And again, I need you to write down these notes with me so you can refer back to them later. Let's now go through an example. Does three times two equal two times three? So as you can see, the order is different. Well, three times two, that's six and two times three, that's six, and six equals six. So the commutative law of multiplication works. Let's now do a little bit of an experiment and ask the question, does the commutative law work for subtraction? So in other words, does my order of subtraction matter? So here's our trial. We want to see if eight minus four equals four minus eight. Let's give it a go. Eight minus four, that's four. And on this side, four minus eight, well, that's negative four. Now, four does not equal negative four, which means that isn't true, which means the commutative law does not work for subtraction. Let's now ask, does the commutative law work for division? And here's our trial. So does eight divided by four equal four divided by eight? So again, does the order of my division impact my answer? Well, eight divided by four, that's two, and four divided by eight, well, that's a half. And a two does not equal half. Two does not equal half, which means that isn't true, which means the commutative law does not work for division. So again, if we were to recap what we've learned about the commutative laws, we have two commutative laws, the commutative law of addition and the commutative law of multiplication. Let's now move on and talk about the distributive law, which is sometimes referred to as the distributive law of multiplication over addition and subtraction. So let's first look at our addition example. So what does the distributive law state? Well, if I have A times B plus C, and as you can see, I have these brackets here, what's going to happen is that this A is going to distribute itself to that B and distribute itself to that C. Remember that this A is timesing this bracket here. So what the distributive law tells me is I can distribute it out to this B and to this C. And what I mean by distributing it out is it's going to be A times B plus A times C. So I wanna make sure that you put in these little lines here to remind you. And then the most important part is that you write in A, B plus A, C. So this A has been distributed out. So if we come down here to our example, we have two times bracket six plus two. So we know that this two is going to distribute out, which means it's going to be two times six 
So two times six plus two times two, two times two. Now, we could approach this question in two ways. Remember bid mass, which tells me that when I see a question like this, I first need to answer what is inside the brackets. So six plus two, well, that's eight. And remember that this two is timesing, so it's going to be two times eight. Now that should be equal to two times six, which is 12, plus two times two, which is four. Now two times eight, that's 16, and 12 plus four, that's 16. So as you can see, they equal each other. So it doesn't matter which way you approach it, you can just do it through your normal order of operations, or you can use your distributive law and distribute out that two to what is inside your brackets, and you're still going to get the same answer. So this is when we're using the distributive law over addition. Let's now see the distributive law when it's over subtraction. So it's going to be exactly the same principle. I'm going to distribute out this A. So it's going to be A times B minus A times C. So I want you to write that out, A, B minus A, C. And down here we have another example. So on this side, I want you to distribute out that two. So it's gonna be two times six, two times six, then minus two times two, two times two. Now on this side, I want you just to follow your normal bid mass. So first I'm going to focus on what is in my brackets. Six minus two, well that is four. And then I'm timesing that by two. And on this side, what I'm doing is two times six, which is 12, whoops, 12. And then I'm minusing two times two, which is four. Two times eight, sorry, two times four is eight. Getting ahead of myself, ahead of myself. 12 minus four is eight. So as you can see, eight equals eight. This demonstrates that distributive law works when I'm doing so over a subtraction sign. So this is our distributive law of multiplication over addition and subtraction. So that now rounds out what we've seen about my arithmetic rules. We've seen associative rules, commutative rules, and distributive rules. Let's now move on and talk about some mental strategies for multiplication. And here we're really going to be utilizing what we just learned about the distributive law. So we have 17 times 12. Now, that's a tricky question because not many people have memorized their 17 times tables. So how can we make this simpler for ourselves? Well, let's leave 17 alone, and then we're going to times it. But instead of timesing it by 12, well, 12 is the same thing as 10 plus two. Now this should look familiar to you. I can now use my distributive law to simply distribute out this 17 to the 10 and then to the two. Now, why did I break it down into 10 and two? The reason for that is because I really love timesing things by 10. I love it. And the reason why is because it's really easy. 17 times 10, that's just 170. And then I'm going to plus onto that 17 times two, which will be 34, which means my answer is going to be 204. So that is my answer to that question. So it's really important that you understand how I utilized my distributive law to answer this question. Let's now go on to another one. So again, I want you to just take down these notes along with me. Here we have 18 times nine. How can I write this in a simpler way using that distributive property once again? Well, this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to have 18 and then I'm going to times it. But now I'm going to represent my nine as 10 minus one because 10 minus one is obviously nine, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get a 10 because I really love timesing things by 10. So I knew that 10 minus one would work and I've got that 10 there. So now I just need to distribute out this 18. So 18 times 10, then 18 times one. So what I'm going to end up with is 180 minus 18. And my answer to that is 162. Let me get my red pen and underline it. 
So hopefully you can see how I use my distributive property to answer these questions. Now I want you to have a go for yourself, pause the video and see how you go with these questions using that distributive property. Let's now answer these questions together. So the first one is 34 times five. Now, how am I going to approach this? Well, what I would do is actually come to my 34 and break that down into 30 plus four. Then I'm going to times this by five. Now, because of our commutative property, we also know that this could be written down as five, 30 plus four. So I just took that five on the other side. Remember our commutative law told us that the order of multiplication doesn't matter. And I also took out that multiplication sign because we don't need it. All right, now we're here. So now what I'm going to do is use my distributive law. So this five times 30, then five times four. So what is five times 30? Well, this isn't tricky because five times three is 15, and then I've got a zero there. So I'm just going to add a zero to my 15, and then five times four, that's 20. So it's going to be plus 20. So my answer is going to be 170, 170. And I'm going to put a red line under it because that is my final answer. Let's now move on to this question where I have 14 times eight. How did you approach this question? Well, this time, what I think I'm going to do is break down this eight. So I'm going to say, this is the same as 14 times 10 minus two. Now I just need to distribute out this 14 to 10 and two. Now notice again, I really love having tens, even a multiple of 10 like over here, but I really love that 10. So 10 minus two is eight, so I'm on the right track. 14 times 10 is simply 140. And then I'm going to minus, oops, if my computer wants to work with me, I'm going to minus 14 times two, which is 28. So that means my answer is going to be one, one, two, 112. Let's now move on to our next question where we have four times 29. This time I'm going to break up my 29. So it's going to be four times 30 minus one because 30 minus one is 29. I have my multiple of 10 there. Now I'm simply going to distribute out this four. So there and there. So it's going to be four times 30, which again is easy because four times three is 12. And then I just simply have a zero there, so I'm going to put that on the end. Then four times one is four. And remember, I have a minus here. So it's going to be 120 minus four, which is 116, 116. So I'm gonna put a red line under that one. Last but not least, 197 times seven. So this time I'm going to break this one up. So this could be 200 minus three, then I'm going to times it by seven. Now, hopefully you realize that I could put this seven on the other side, but I don't need to, I can leave it there, remembering my commutative properties. So this is going to be seven times 200 and seven times three. So seven times 200, well, all I need to do is go, what is seven times two? Well, that's 14. And because I have two zeros here, I'm just going to have two zeros here. Then I'm going to minus, what is seven times three? Well, seven times three is 21. So now all I have to do is 1400 minus 21, which will be 13, whoa. My computer is getting tired. 13, seven, nine. 13, seven, nine, and let me put a red line under that. That is going to be my answer. So hopefully you're able to do all these questions. If not, make sure you're writing down these notes as I do them. Let's now recap what we have learned in this lesson. So let's review our arithmetic laws. So our learning objectives were to describe and apply the associative, commutative, and distributive laws. So hopefully at the end of this, you're able to give these all a big tick, you understand them. And secondly, what we wanted to do was multiply numbers using mental strategies. So hopefully you feel confident doing that as well. Hopefully this lesson was helpful to you. Make sure you do your homework that's associated with this topic.